Crikey, there's lots of you. Uh, it's nice to be here in Gateshead. I'm going to get my geography right. Um, I'm here to share some of the insights um, that we've had uh, building this project you probably know very little about in Newcastle. Um, first off, I'm going to start off by saying, what is a smart city? Maybe you've heard the term. And I, I think of it like a driverless car, if you like. That's how most people envisage this idea of a smart city, where we take all of these inputs, our car is sensing what's going on around all the time, and it takes all of these inputs, and then it's making microscopic adjustments so that we drive safely along, along those roads, and we don't crash into anyone, and we keep a good distance. And the idea that many people have about a smart city is very much like that. We're optimizing the city, tweaking it all the time to making it uh, flow very efficiently and work beautifully together. And that way, of course, we can save lots of money. Newcastle has a long history of being smart. You might not know this, that Newcastle was the first city in the world. Mosley Street was the first street in the world to get electric lighting. So we've been smart for ages. We just don't shout about it enough. And my vision of a smart city and what we've been trying to build here in Newcastle isn't this idea of the driverless car just moving along trying to be optimal. It's really thinking about smart decisions. How do we make these really smart decisions? One of the ways we've been thinking about the city is the city is having loads of experiments all of the time. Every time we make a decision in the city, we change a road design, we build a housing estate, we are making these inputs into the city. And you can consider those as an experiment. And the way experiments work is we observe beforehand, we perturb a system, and then we observe really closely afterwards to understand the impact of what we've done. So that's really the vision that we're trying to set out here and trying to achieve in Newcastle. And why is this important? Why do we need to worry about this type of things? Well, we're faced with some of these problems in our cities and our society that are the termed wicked problems. And wicked problems have no optimal solution. There's no easy path. There's no magic button. There's no winner takes all. These are problems that are political, economic, social. In order to solve some of these wicked problems, like air pollution, for instance. Air pollution is responsible for several thousand premature deaths every year. In Newcastle, we'll be introducing a congestion charge to try and combat some of these air pollution problems. These are an example of wicked problems. And ultimately, at the bottom of all these wicked problems is this idea that we need to trade off. We need to make hard decisions about who's going to pay both literally and figuratively, for these decisions. <coughs> Many of you in the audience will remember the uh, beautifully named Toon Monsoon of 2012. The video behind you shows what the uh, quayside just across the river looked like during those events. And what's that showing us here is that these systems, things like a natural thing like a, a rainfall event, albeit a, a serious one, interact with other systems. Our drainage system couldn't cope with the amount of water. Because our drainage system can't cope with the amount of water, then our traffic system shuts down. In the Toon Monsoon, we lost the metro, we lost the railways, we lost the roads. We also lost power because our substations got flooded. Because we lost power, we lost communications. All of these systems, both natural, physical, infrastructure, they're all in interlinked. Here in Newcastle, for the past five years, we've been deploying sensors in the city. Newcastle is the most heavily monitored city in the UK. It has the largest open environmental data set anywhere in the world, including London. Just putting that out there. <laughs> 
We have deployed well over a thousand devices. Next time you're wandering around the streets of Newcastle, have a look up. On a lamppost not too far away from you, you'll see an innocuous beige or gray box. They're innocuous, so nobody nicks them. <laughs> and they're scattered all over the city, and they're collecting thousands of bits of information. In fact, we gather 6,000 pieces of information every single minute of every single day. And all of that data is published openly for anyone to go and have a look at, analyze, and for researchers and for the city to try and understand how the city operates and generate a base of evidence. <coughs> this is all based on what we call the Internet of Things. And as the name suggests, it's stuff attached to the Internet. So embedded things in our infrastructure, in our traffic lights, in our lamp posts, in our light posts, that's attached to the Internet and transmitting data back. Attached to that is this idea of ubiquitous communications. 4G, 5G, LoRaWAN, narrowband IoT. The ability to transmit data wirelessly at very low cost from anywhere in the city. And coupled with that, we've generated to date about 1.7 billion records of uh, things happening in the city. Things like changes in our air quality, things like changes in temperature, things like rainfall, all of these environmental and infrastructural factors. <coughs> when you've got all of that data, what do you do with it? Well, we use new techniques and old techniques such as machine learning and artificial intelligence. Uh, we have a network of CCTV cameras around the city that does pedestrian counting. Counting, mind you, not facial recognition. Just counting is all we do. Uh, so we have this to collect information about pedestrian flows and traffic flows around the city center. If any of you are slightly worried about artificial intelligence and machine learning taking over the world, just for a moment look to the left of this video where this artificial intelligence is picked out Robbie Williams. <laughs> um, so these are imperfect systems. So I wouldn't worry too much about artificial intelligence taking over the world just yet. We're safe for the moment. <coughs> So job done then, Newcastle, smart city of the year 2019, well done. Well, it's a little bit more complicated than that. Anyone who tells you that all you need to do is throw technology at a problem to fix it is lying through their teeth. Many of you might remember the uh, Helter Skelter that appeared in Northumberland Street uh, last year uh, as part of the Christmas celebrations. Um, and whilst the children got lots of fun from it, it also took out all of our comms in the city centre for five days as it broke the microwave link that transmitted CCTV and sensor data. Um, so good job we didn't tell any of the pickpockets at the time. They could have had a field day for a few days. In our cities, they're very complex systems, they're complex places to operate. It's really hard to do business. In fact, just measuring things, measuring atmospheric gases, measuring traffic, measuring pedestrian flows is really hard to do. We have to think about the interdependencies. Measuring, for instance, NO2, which is the subject of our uh, coming congestion charge, is dependent on many uh, atmospheric conditions that are completely separate to, than the root cause of it, which is usually traffic. So it's a very complex thing trying to measure the city. <coughs> um, this is a lamppost on the left here. It's a humble lamppost. Uh, I should point out this is a lamppost that the university owns. And I should also point out that uh, Everybody was up for it, and everyone was in perfect agreement. And what we wanted to do was put a sensor on that lamppost and get some power from it. And that's what it took. Now, <coughs> what that demonstrates is smart cities aren't a technical problem. That little decision is sitting on top 
of an iceberg of social, economic, political and process challenges that we have to overcome. And we're starting to go on that journey in Newcastle here. It's a, not a technical problem, smart cities. Smart cities are all about people and processes and making the right and hard decisions. <coughs> I love data. It's in my job title. I have to love data. Um, but data doesn't tell us very much all by itself. So here we can see on consecutive days uh, from the 100 or so noise sensors dotted around the city, three peaks. So something's going on. The problem with data is without context, we don't know what's going on. And if we don't know what's going on, we don't know how to fix it. So one of the things we do in Newcastle is we capture still images from the 234 CCTV cameras, and they are linked to our observations so that we can start to understand what's happening in the city and giving it context. We also need to capture what people understand and experience in the city. It's not just about technology and cameras. Now, if you're wondering what those three peaks were, that was um, Ed Sheeran's uh, stint at St. James's Park and his encore night after night on the three consecutive things at St. James's Park. How we solve that problem, I'll leave that to you. <laughs> and here we have, um, this is data from our pollution sensors, about 600 of them scattered across the air, uh, region, Newcastle, North Tyneside and Gateshead. And this is from bonfire night last night. The blue line you can see there is the air quality standard line. So on bonfire night, as we set off our fireworks, light our barbecues and bonfires, you can see it rising steadily and getting quite, quite excessive there. So according to this data, perhaps we should cancel bonfire night. But actually, bonfire night has a huge social, cultural, and economic value. Data helps us make some decisions. If we can provide some of the social capital and the economic capital and the political will in order to be able to make some of these hard decisions through data, then I would consider that to be a smart city. So what's the glittering prize that we're after here? What's the glittering prize? The glittering prize for me, and a smart city I want to live in, is one where we can take this data, we can democratize this data, so that we can make those really hard decisions. We have to make hard decisions about climate change, about air quality, about social inequality. And if we can pr produce the political and social will to do that through data, then I think that's a glittering prize worth fighting for. The other thing I'd like to think about is that we actually learn from our successes and our mistakes. Very much in, in cities and in planning, a lot of effort goes into planning something. Virtually nothing goes into understanding what the impact of that has been. Imagine if we could see through data that when we make a decision, the implications of that decision rippling out across sectors, across time, across geography. And then we can decide, based on data and some evidence, whether we want to go ahead with that or we do it better next time. Now, there's a smart city I want to live in. And if it's going to happen anywhere, it's going to happen here, and it's going to happen in Newcastle. Thank you.